Led by Thurgood Marshall and other young lawyers like Robert Carter, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund was running or aiding cases all over the country. The court picked five and consolidated them into one set of arguments, forever known as Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. As oral arguments approached, people camped outside the building to assure themselves a seat in the courtroom. NAACP lawyers Marshall and Carter were up against a formidable adversary, John W. Davis, a former presidential candidate, making the last of his 140 appearances at the Supreme Court. But his arguments had a familiar ring. Separate wasn't necessarily unequal. Blacks should be happy with the way things were. Didn't states have the right to educate their children as they saw fit? When the three days of arguments were over, Davis was heard to remark, I think we've got it one, five to four, or maybe six to three. The justices scheduled another hearing on the case, but before that could happen, Chief Justice Vincent died of a heart attack. President Eisenhower chose to nominate Earl Warren, formerly the governor of California. On May 17, 1954, there were signs. Some of the justices' wives showed up. Some clerks were tipped off. Then reporters rushed the courtroom. Warren starts off in a bland manner, and you can't tell for a while as he's delivering the opinion what the outcome is going to be. And then he comes to the key line and he says, and we unanimously hold that separate but equal has no place in the Constitution. And it was just electric in the courtroom when he said unanimous. We conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. Therefore, we unanimously hold that the plaintiffs are deprived of the equal protection of the laws guaranteed by the 14th Amendment. Plessy v. Ferguson in education is no more, and in practice, Plessy v. Ferguson itself is no more. The era of Jim Crow, constitutionally speaking, 